The Financial Conduct Authority is calling a special meeting of the Licensed Taxi Drivers Association in an attempt to restore some form of democratic member control as required under the rules and principles governing cooperative societies. Some members say that the LTDA has been captured by a tiny number of people who over the years have removed certain democratic processes that underpin cooperative rules. The FCA recognise that the members have lost control and seek to redress the situation. The decision has not been taken lightly and is the result of a requisite number of applicants calling on the FCA to address problems within the LTDA. So much so, the FCA had no choice but to intervene. In short, the LTDA proposed to remove the delegate who represents decisions arrived at through debate, scrutiny and consideration. They are doing this by trying to convince the membership that they are the only ones that favour a one-member, one-vote system, which isn't true. The reality is, both sets of proposals allow for a one-member, one-vote system. The major difference is that the comms proposal requires that any resolution submitted by a member must not only have the support of 100 members, but must also have the prior approval of the comm themselves before it even gets as far as a member vote. This means that the comm retains control by granting themselves the right to veto a member's proposal, no matter how credible. Whilst this has been presented by the comm as a way to modernise the voting system, it unequivocally restricts democratic member control and is one of the reasons why the FCA is attempting to restore democracy to the LTDA. Now, conversely, the applicant's proposal places no such restrictions on a member's ability to put forward a resolution and rejects the proposal of a proxy vote. To be clear, the applicant allows members to decide what to vote on, whereas the COM proposed that they alone, via the power of a proxy vote, decide what members vote on. And as I see it, the applicants want nothing more but to return a more accountable and transparent association to its members, where they can, if they wish, be more proactive. Not only that, and this is the real killer, if members lose faith in the ability of the comm, and many over the years have done so, then the comm's proposal requires the signatures of 500 members, each depositing the sum of £50, which is £25,000 in total, to call a special general meeting, and that deposit is only returned in full if the resolution is passed at that meeting. This is a requirement unheard of in any UK cooperative and effectively makes the calling of a special general meeting virtually impossible. In the same way that the existing threshold of 51% means members just cannot hold those at the COM accountable. Once again, the applicant's proposal for an SGM requires the endorsement of 10% of the membership or 100 members, whichever is the lower, and is the prevailing requirement in the majority of UK cooperatives. It should be noted also that the COM control the membership database and media output. Therefore, it is easier for them to remove opposing views or stymie objective debate. Historically, members have never been able to organise themselves in effective voting blocks, and by removing the branches, the COM silence criticism altogether. They also removed the democratic process by which member drivers could be elected onto the Council of Management. Now think about it. When was the last time the LTDA held a meaningful vote? They are only doing so now because they have tried to force through changes that go against cooperative rules. Incidentally, I was expelled from the association for holding them to account, and since then, 21 other members have been expelled for seeking to do the same. This cannot continue. The applicants are proposing that mediation be introduced in order to make the process fairer and more just. As far as the trade goes, we desperately need to find a better system of governance. Many of the irreversible risks that now threaten our trade originate from a rapid pace of industrial development, coupled with a proliferation of emerging technology and an adamance by TfL not to effectively tackle the situation. And conveniently for TfL, the system currently in place to represent the trade and effectively manage many of the issues we are now facing is done by using yesterday's tools and by the same people. And as a consequence, the necessary action is either not taken or is taken too late, while the problems and risks the industry faces continue to grow and mutate. Again, this needs to change. The question is, do members vote to retain the status quo, which has overseen the trade being brought to its knees, 
or vote for more scrutiny, accountability and transparency. In my opinion, democracy should always allow peer pressure as a legitimate way to make a decision. And if I was a member, I would not hesitate to vote on the side of the applicant. Whichever way you see it, I urge all members to participate if they possibly can. The virtual meeting is scheduled for 2 p.m. on Tuesday, the 8th of March, where the proposals will be discussed and questions will hopefully at least be answered. You then have until the 17th of March to cast your vote.